tradition that Chagi Maharaj has been working on, mm-hmm. um, including Srila Sridhar Maharaj's um, commentaries on the verses collected from his talks. It was something that Gurudev requested would be done, and so Chagi Maharaj took the initiative to try to do that. Is it finished or not yet? Is what finished? Is You mean, is the work finished? No, it's not finished. Not at all. But I just realized, here he's only going up to verse 9. So he doesn't have after verse 9. I'll have to ask him about that. Um, but first we were, we wanted to, we were, we were discussing Jamuna Charja earlier. It came up in discussion. <laughs> very, very nice. Because it's, we're um, Guru Dev's glorification. No, 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 no. We're being recorded live here, so <laughs> cannot say publicly <laughs> who we were talking about. <laughs> we were thinking of somebody who who reminded us of. Jamuna charge it. Yes, but we will true. say that off the record. <laughs> no, because the, the, the history of Jamuna Charja, <clears throat> his grandfather was a very great Vaishnava. <coughs> and he was like a, like a leader, a guru amongst the Vaishnavas, as I recall. And, and Jamuna, oh, Isham Prabhu ki jai, very happy to see you. Do you, did you want to speak with him? <laughs> um, so, Jamuna, he was, he was the grandson of this very great Vaishnava. And his father died when he was quite young, as I recall. So he was mainly raised by his mother and they were quite poor. And then, then there's a there's a very wonderful history about how he he came to marry a princess. That he he was a very brilliant student studying under his his guru. And at that time, the the ruler of that the king of that area he had one one like court scholar, a court pundit called Kalahal. And, and he was, you know, very scholarly, very intelligent, but not, not so good-natured and very arrogant. And, and the king had made some system that, that all of like the like teachers, scholar types, I believe, they had to pay some special tax unless they could defeat Kolahal in a debate. And... And so every year they would have to pay this tax. And Jamuna's own teacher, his guru teacher, who he studied under, was very poor. And I think one or two years he wasn't able to, to pay this tax. And then, and then one year Jamuna's guru happened to be out. And, and then these people came from the king to collect this tax. <laughs> And Jamuna, he was like a young boy, maybe 12 years old or something. But he was very, you know, he was, he was not happy. These, these men wanted to take money from his guru. And he, he ended up challenging them. And they were very, they were very you know, angry with him. And, and, and Jamuna said, no, my teacher will not pay this tax. I will debate with this Kalahal and I will defeat him. He was like this young, young boy, you know. And, and they were, you know, they, they were, you know, they were angry at, at his behavior. They went back and reported to the king. And the king said, well, bring him here, you know, bring him here. And, and, the, and he came and he, you know, he didn't look like an ordinary boy. He looked like a, a bright boy. And the queen took a liking to him. And so the king and the queen, they made a bet. Let me think, what was the bet? 
but I can't remember exactly the, the details of the bet, but the queen was backing the boy, Jamuna, and the king was backing Kolahal, his court pundit. And the king promised that if, that if, if this boy Jamuna won in debate against Kalahal, then he would, he would gain, he would give him his own daughter in marriage, and he would give him half of his kingdom. He, he made this promise, if he was able to defeat Kalahal in, in debate. And anyhow, there we hear there's some description of you know, what happened in the debate, but that's for another day. So anyhow, this debate took place, and sure enough, Jamuna, he was so brilliant, he defeated Kalahal. And so then he married the princess, he became you know, ruler to half of the kingdom. And so like this, he, he you know, from you know, poverty really, he became this wealthy ruler. But meanwhile, Jamuna's grandfather, who was this great Vaishnav, he was, you know, he was sad to hear news of his grandson. How, you know, he was becoming absorbed in, in you know, the pleasures of royal life and power and so on and so forth. And then finally, his grandfather, he was on his deathbed. And he, and at that time, he told one of his disciples, you know, you know our, our Vaishnav, group is under threat, you know, because now Shankar Charja's group is becoming very powerful. And we need, our Vaishnav group needs a very strong leader. And I know who that leader can be. That, that person is my grandson, Jamuna. He's a very brilliant, you know, young man. He, he can save us. And so he, on his deathbed, he requested one of his disciples, you know, please go and try to, to bring this boy, this grandson of mine, bring him out of royal life and, you know, get him involved, you know, in our, in our Vaishnav culture and, you know, we need him to lead our group so we can be strong and powerful again. So he made this request on his, like his last, his last request. And so his, this disciple of his took it very much to heart and he, and he went to uh, he went to, to to the you know to the city where Jamuna was was living you know, in in the palace, and but of course this is not an easy thing you know it's like if you want to go and see the queen at Buckingham Palace it's not an easy thing to do, so but he was very intelligent, and so he found out that Jamu there was a particular type of shock a type of spinach that Jamuna liked. And, and it wasn't so easy to get. And so he found, he, he would go to some place where it could be picked fresh, and he would collect that and bring it to the kitchen. And he did this every day for some time. This like favorite, favorite spinach of Jamuna, he would every day pick it and just bring it to the kitchen and give it to them to prepare for the king. And so this went on for some time, every you know, day after day he did this. And then one day, he didn't go. You know, this was like part of his plan, you know, he didn't go. So then, then that day, the king asked his servant, oh, every day you've been bringing me this very nice shock, but I see today you didn't bring it. And you know, what happened? And they said, oh, well, there's one sadhu who's been bringing this every day for you, for your satisfaction, but today he didn't come. And naturally, the king was very intrigued. You know, like, this is very mysterious. You know, why, like, some sadhu is bringing this for the king. It's like, and not saying anything, not asking for anything, you know. So the king was very intrigued by this. And he said, oh, next time this sadhu comes, please bring him to me. You know, I want to, I want to, to speak with him. So, so then the, the sadhu, this disciple of Jamuna's grandfather, very intelligent, you know, he knew, this, he knew the psychology here. <laughs> so then, then he came the next day, and as he expected, they, they told him, oh, the king, he would like to meet you. you know? And so they brought him to meet the king. And, 
and it, and then the I've heard different descriptions of their meeting, but as I recall, Shila Shudamarja's description of their meeting is the sadhu he 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 like broke down in tears in front of uh, Jamuna Charja, like you know we we need your help, you know the our Vaishnav faith is is under threat, you know, and we we need your help, you know, please you must come and support our cause. I heard that version and also heard another version where um, this, this sadhu, he told the king that your grandfather left some treasure buried for you and we have to go to this faraway place to collect it and, and it, then when he Finally, he brought him there. He agreed to go, and it was, I think it was the Ranganath Temple, t a temple in South India, Vishnu Temple. You maybe know, very famous temple. Um, and that was the treasure. And along the way, you know, they had association, and he was influenced by that. And so, 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 so anyhow, you know, the king, he, you know, Jamuna, he ended up leaving everything, leaving all of his, his wealth and his, you know, kingly pleasures and he fully joined the, the Sri Vaishnavas and he became, you know, very great leader of the Sampradaya. But it's, it's a very, very, you know, very wonderful, you know, history, you know, how you know, it was like, you, know, you, you weren't here when I told the story. <laughs> I have to tell you in a nutshell for <laughs> But essentially, he was in, uh, he, he was the grandson of a very great Vaishnav. And he, I already, it's a long story, I can't tell it again. But, but he became, he became a king, Jamuna, by particular circumstances he became a king he was born into poverty but he became a king and and he was absorbed in kingly you know pleasures and you know you know materialistic life and when his grandfather was on his deathbed he requested one of his disciples he was a guru please bring jamuna out of this worldly life you know and we need him you know Shank shankar charges group is becoming very strong and we need this boy he's so brilliant you know he can save us he's he's our leader so you have to go and and bring him out convince him to join our cause and so he he that's another story i, I can't tell it again that's okay <laughs> but it's all recorded <laughs> so so then he he brought him out and so sometimes we we observe people we, we see what brilliant qualities they have and what capacity they have. And we think, if they would join our group, you know, if we could like, get them on our side, like how much we could do, you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, it's, it's very it's an inspiring history. And then Jamuna Acharya, he of course became one of the most well-known Vaishnavs in the in that line, the Sri Sampradaya, and then after him, Ramanuja. And Ramanuja, I think he. I mean, sometimes that Sampradaya is called the Ramanuja Sampradaya because Ramanuja he became you know so influential, and powerful, and famous. And Ramanuja he came. He was the next you know very great acharya after Jamuna. And they never met actually. And just when Jamuna Charger was like very shortly, maybe a few moments after he left the world, Ramanuja was finally able to come and, and meet him. But he just missed him, you know. So he he met him there on like on his when just after he departed from his body. But that's another story we'll we'll tell another another day. And Jamuna Charja, so many beautiful prayers. The, today we were in Chaitanya Charitamrita. We were we were hearing some of those prayers. Rupa and Sanatan were citing two of his prayers when they first met with Mahaprabhu. 
And Srila Sridhar Maharaj, we see he's included several of his prayers in Prapana Jivanamrita. Very wonderful prayers. So very, very great Vaishnav for us. He's not in, in our line, the Gaudiya line, but you know, the mood that he, ex that he expresses, it is exactly what <coughs> Mahaprabhu is, is telling us, you know, this mood of Sharanagati. Is well, perfectly, wonderfully expressed in the writings of Jamuna Charge. All right. Well, we can maybe continue with Upadeshamrita. So we've come to the the ninth verse. And let me see if I can remember where we are. It's been a little while since we, I don't know, somehow lots of things have been happening and we haven't been reading this. Okay. Well. Okay, I'm just going to start here. Jai Shri Gurudev. <clears throat> So Parangumaraj is speaking here about Sukruti. That we meet a proper sadhu is not a chance coincidence, but is the result of previous Sukruti. Then with Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Sankirtan and all these things we progress. And unconsciously, unknowingly, we can pass over the different subtle strata of Maya. Shatta Patra Veda Nyai, as it takes no time to pierce through the hole of a one hundred petaled lotus. Though if we analyze, we see that gradually the needle passed through each one of the one hundred petals, so unconsciously we may pass through the different strata. This is this is an interesting point, because this is a question that sometimes our devotees ask, you know, because we see in Brihad Bhagavatamrita as Param Gumarsh has just been, previously Param Gumarsh has been describing the journey of Gopa Kumar. So you see in, in uh, Brihad Bhagavatamrita, it's described how Gopa Kumar is, you know, very tangibly moving through so many different levels, right? You know, you know he, so he goes through the heavenly planets, he reaches the post of Lord you know, he, he takes, has the post of Lord Indra, then he has the post of Lord Brahma, then he goes through Shiva Loka, then he goes through Vaikuntha, Ayodhya, Dwarka. So like, like literally step by step, he's going through all these different levels. And sometimes devotees, they ask this question, like, well, we have to do that, you know. And, and Srila Gurudev, when somebody asked him, he said, no, for someone who's taken shelter in this Sampradaya, it's like, like uh, getting on an elevator, you know, in, as opposed to going by the stairs, you know, you can, you can like immediately bypass, you know, so many layers. Or also he said like getting on an airplane in one place and getting off in the other. You get in New York City, you get off in Calcutta, <coughs> like that. And so similarly, Srila Sridhar he's he's describing this, how unconsciously, you know, we may Past. All of these planes are planes of consciousness, actually. And so, we, it's not that physically we have to go, but on the level of consciousness, we, we will progress. This is the meaning of the analogy that Mahaprabhu gives of the, you know, shraddha faith as, the, the, as, a, as a seed, right? A seed. And what is the, when that description is there of the seed, you know, sprouting into a creeper, and that creeper climbing through all the different layers in the the multiverse, as you said very nicely the other day. Um, so, what does that mean? It means our faith is going through so many different strata, so many different planes of consciousness, 
and you know within the material sphere and then beyond even in the spiritual domain must pass through to reach Goloka Vrindavan and so here Parangumarshi he uses this example the, this is example is used to illustrate different things the, you have a here Parangumarshi says a a hundred petaled lotus. Normally we hear a hundred a bunch of a hundred leaves that you if you put one needle through them, then from one perspective you'll say, Oh, it went through instantly, you know. And from another perspective you'll say that there was some small time, you know, going from from leaf to leaf or from petal to petal, as Paramgumar is saying here. So this is a nice example for this, our consciousness moving through so many planes. You no, know, it's like like almost it's like an unconscious thing that you're not really conscious moving through. But at the same time there is this progression going from layer to layer. And also Srila Gurudev and Srila Sridamars, they've also used this example in regards to how you know, our, we may feel like we're not making any progress, you know, because Srila Bhakti you know, Thakur, he makes, he makes these expressions, oh, you know, if you take the name that, you know, if you take in the name, the chanting of the names of Radha and Krishna, there is some consideration of offense. But in chanting the names of Nitai Chaitanya, Krishna Prem will come and search you out. <laughs> There's no consideration of offense. You know, you'll instantly get Krishna pain. You know. So Gurudev asked Srila Sridhar question, you know, how is, we're all chanting, everyone's chanting, but who's getting Krishna pain? <laughs> <laughs> and Srila Sridhar he gave the same, uh, you know, example from, I think it's from the logic scriptures, the Nyai Shastra, the, the you know, you put this needle through a bunch of leaves and actually it's instant but there's still some time going from leaf to leaf you know so similarly you know we're thinking one life this you know, so many years you know so much time but actually it's nothing one life is nothing you know, you know like like uh you know, like for like for example, the demigods who live much longer than us, we're, we're like mosquitoes. You know, like like how quickly our lives are going. Like Gurudev would give that example sometimes. How mosquitoes they live for like 15 days or something like that. You know, and they're looking at humans, thinking, "Wow, they live forever." <laughs> like we look at the demigods, think, "Wow, they live forever." Actually, they don't live forever. They're actually mortal beings. I mean, they live for so many hundreds and thousands of years, but eventually they also have to have to go, you know. So those mosquitoes are looking at us and we're looking at the potatoes. Can't they just give a little bit of blood? Come <laughs> on, they have so much of it. Just give just a tr tiny drop of blood for us. <laughs> And so in this way, you know, one life, two life, hundred lifetimes, you know, in the, I mean, in the course of the course of time that it may take for, you know, full purification to take place. And, and uh, you know, this gift of Krishna Prema to fully blossom, you know, it, it's very, in the, in the Ananta Kal, Gurudev would say, in, in the, you know, from the perspective of eternal time, it's nothing. It's just like the snap of a finger, actually. So from that perspective, you will say it's it's instant, you know. But there's some little time, you know, going from life to life, just like from leaf to leaf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to pass through all the stages: Viraja, Ramalok, Shivalok, Vaikunta, and so on. But there may be no stopping at these stations. We may quickly pass through them, through our destination, one station after another, like a train that passes many stations without stopping. It depends on the, on the degree of dedication, just like a, like a rocket, right? You know, how much momentum it's gathered, 
that 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 uh, you know how far it can can go. Like when you throw something, how far it will go depends on like what type of momentum it has, what with what type of force it's been thrown, right? So in the same way, the spirit of dedication is like that. The spirit of dedication allows you to go to to higher and higher spears. The you know you know you know lack of the dedicating spirit or exploitation in the very gross sense, those make you heavy, you know, then you have to come down to to lower lower planes. But the more the force of dedication has developed within us, you know, the, the the higher we can we can go. Gurudev used to give the example of a, a rocket, right? Uh, in, uh, and he would say, the launching pad is faith. <laughs> faith is the launching pad that can shoot us to Goloka Vrindavan. And he also said once, you know, by the grace of Srila Guru Maharaj, I can launch any rocket to Goloka Vrindavan. <laughs> <laughs> Necessarily we will pass through those stages, but it may be very quickly and unconsciously. If we somehow feel some special attraction somewhere, we may stop. But if our guide is strong, then they will say, no, 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 no stopping here. There is no charm. What is here is this and that. It is only detention and has no absolute value. Come forward. And we also see in the case with Gopal Kumar, because he received this particular connection from a Braj Basi, you know, a, 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 a devotee in the mood of Vrindavan, and he received this mantra, Gopal mantra, right? This is Krishna mantra, Vrindavan Krishna mantra. That mantra has its own will. And so because of that, when, whenever he reaches somewhere, he's there for some time, becomes settled for some time, but eventually because of the force of this mantra, he's dissatisfied, you know, and he feels some pull to go to a higher place. And so similarly, our, our gurus, they have, you know, they've accepted us, you know, they've given us, you know, you know, you know accepted us into this high line. They've given us, you know, these mantras that, you know, like these seeds have been planted within our heart and they have some power, you know, they will, they will take us. <coughs> We must be careful to follow the steps properly. No step should be ignored. We must move to the higher, the next, and then the next. And we must remember that only our soul can have experience and get membership in the highest plane, not to this body or mind. Neither the eye nor the mind can grasp that thing. The soul will be awakened and then all the rulings of the mind and the senses will evaporate. We will get the true body of our soul and emerge from our present conscious body and mind. Everything must be of spiritual order. The imitationists, the Sahajiya school, try to find what they have heard about Krishna in this mundane plane but that is not possible. We have to go there through sadhana under the direction of a real sadhu. Now these are these verses from Chaitanya Charitamrita which we were just describing. Upaji describing the progress of the, the, the creeper of our devotion or faith, how it progresses. Upaji abade lata brahmanda bedi jai viraja brahma lokpedi paravam pai tobe jai tadu padi goloka vrindavan so it's describing all these layers all the the this uh this lata this creeper it will go through all the different levels within the brahmanda and brahmanda referring to this multiverse i was trying to think of a good translation for brahmanda but you 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 no, gave no. actually multiverse many brahmandas but you see, Brahmanda, 
Sometimes we hear it translated as universe, but I also recall in one place Shri Lushidama said it's more than that actually, oh, really? Ramanda. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, we see it, that's like a standard translation, but hmm. I'm not exactly sure, you know. Yeah. I just think of the egg, you know, you see this like egg, the lotus. But what is within that? Is that just one universe? I don't know. How do you define a universe? Yeah, how do you define a universe? That's a good question. <laughs> we, have to, we have to do our homework. <laughs> Anyway, we'll, okay, we'll just go for the standard translation then. Uh, the creeper of devotion will go through all the different layers of the Brahmanda. I'm just going to say Brahmanda. Um, and then Viraja, the, the, the causal ocean, the buffer point, uh, first connecting with the material sphere, then Brahma Lok, you know, the Brahm, Brahman, Brahma Jyoti, the buffer to the spiritual plane, then Paravom, the spiritual sky beginning with Vaikuntha, and then finally Vrindavan, the highest layer. The creeper of devotion grows gradually and pierces through all the different stages of mundane conception, from gross to subtle, Bhu, Bhuvar, Swa, Maha, Jana, Tapa, Satya Lok, and then Viraja and Brahma Lok. And remember, all of these really is more helpful to think of them as planes of consciousness. Of course, they have their localized existence, but, but really they represent planes of consciousness. Like sometimes I think of it as like, like uh, if someone being an American, right? We were speaking about that the other day. How, you know, maybe someone's born in America, but they don't identify as being an American at all. You know? And they're living in America, but they don't identify with the, with the interests of their nation. And then you may have somebody else who's, in, who's in, born in, uh, let's say, Sweden. And they love America. And they, they, they think like Americans, whatever an American is supposed to be. You know? But, <laughs> but it's, it's an analogy. You know? So it's a, America means a particular... Consciousness. Oh, this is American music. These are American clothes. This is American food. That's what America means, really. It doesn't mean, you know, a geographical place necessarily. So it is like that. Then it touches, so this creeper means our faith will have to progress through all these different conceptions, planes of consciousness. Then it touches the land of Vaikuntha, the plane of perfect, real, infinite conception. Only after passing through that does it go to Vrindavan. From calculative devotion, we come to continuous devotion based on love. So this is what Vaikuntha represents, calculative devotion. Uh, Jnana Mishra Bhakti. Of course, Jnana Mishra Bhakti has different connotations, and I, don't, I think we normally wouldn't use it to refer to Vaikuntha. But, but I mean in the sense that there's jnana in the sense of this awareness of aishvarja, of the, the godliness, you know, this mood of awe and reverence, consciousness. We are worshipping God, you know. This is, a, this is a type of calculative worship, right? You know, God is before us. We have to bow to God. We have to serve God, you know. There's some calculation here. But so this is the, this is the consciousness of Vaikuntha. But then beyond that is Vrindavan, the plane of spontaneous, you know, hearts, attraction, hearts, the irresistible service out of irresistible pull of the heart. So from calculative devotion, we come to continuous devotion based on love, the plane that is causeless and irresistible. There we find Krishna with his paraphernalia engaged in his lila, and gradually we may be accepted. Ihamali Shetche Shavan Kirtanali Jal. Being watered, this wonderful analogy Mahaprabhu gives that you that you know you have to become a gardener. When you receive the seed of devotion, seed of faith, you have to become a gardener and you have to water it with you remember, right? 
What are the waters that you water the seed of devotion with? Associations. Okay. No, something more specific. It's something more specific. Association is like a given. Yeah. It's a pre presupposed. Service. Association service is like the same thing. Yeah. Because yeah. this real association means service. Mm -hmm. And then there's like the Yes. Yeah. Very good. Yes. The, the water that you water your seed with is compared to Shavan, said to be Shavan and Kirtan. Ihamali Seche Shavan Kirtan Ali Jal. The Jal, the water of Shavan and Kirtan. It says here Shavan Kirtanadi. Adi means beginning with, so many other things. But prince, these are the principal practices that Mahaprabhu came to give. And these things support these things, you know, Sadhu Sangha, Vaishnav Seva, these are all like fundamental to that. They are like the the basis on which these things can take place. Like Srila Sridamarshi, he gave the example for Sharanagati. The mood of Atmani Veda and Sharanagati surrender is being like the stage on which all the other practices will be performed. So just like if you have some drama going on, if the stage collapses, then everything collapses, right? There's, it's not possible. So in the same way, you know, uh, this spirit of surrender, Sharanagati, is what, is what makes meaningful all the practices that, that we may perform. And Sharanagati, you know, presupposes, you know, seva, sadhu sangha, like that. As the devotional creeper reaches towards that stage in the world, the owner of that creeper will pour water on the roots of the creeper within their heart. We must try to nurture the creeper on our level by watering it with the practices of hearing, chanting, and so on. And overhead in the background, the creeper may grow. We are to do sadhana, cultivation of Krishna, through sadhu sangha, nam sankirtan, and worship of the deity, Sri Murti Archan. We will engage in service to Sri Gurudev and the Vaishnavas. And these other duties we will perform. Uh, and while we perform these duties, internally our aspiration will rise up and up and up. Then one day, by the association of that creeper, we will be taken up to that highest stage. Automatically, naturally, we will be taken there. And this point is very important. You know, that Shila, Shila, we've heard Srila Sridhar say how Srila Sarasati Thakur used to say, we are watering the roots. You know, like, or, or also, no, I think what it was, we are doing the groundwork, it was something, I can't remember the exact expression, but it was, some, it was something to do with the earth, like, like, we're, like we're preparing the ground, like, 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 in other words, we're giving our attention to the basis, you know, or you can also say we're watering the root. You know, in other words, we're not trying to jump to that highest plane through our own attempts, as the Sahajiyas do. But we give our attention to the root, to watering the seed, to watering the root. The fruit will automatically come. No, automatically we will be taken forcefully it won't be it's not that we have to like calculate you know oh I've been practicing for 20 years now and it's time that I was getting on you know and moving up to the higher higher class you know? <laughs> it will be something that we can't resist so we give our attention to the to the to the basis to the fundamental practices to the lower services and irresistibly, automatically, we will be taken to the to the higher level when it is time. You know, like, 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 you know, like if a mother is about to give birth, you know, she doesn't need anybody to tell her. You know, now it's time for your baby. Okay, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> like, 
No, it, she, it's like she will know and everybody else will know. You know, she doesn't need anyone to tell her. It will be like that, you know, not that we artificially and calculatively have to. So always, you know, we're given this caution. Give your attention to the basis, to the, to the lower spear, and everything else will automatically come. Srila Sridhar said this was the whole tenor of the preaching of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. That, that is very high. Don't go, we are not going to jump there so easily or so quickly. You know, let us understand how high that is. And we are staying in, the, in a, lower, a lower sphere. So like what was like his motto, this Pujala Ragapat, Gorva Bange, Matala Sadujana, Vishaya Range. You know, that is, we are doing puja to that higher plane, that raga pot. We are doing puja to that. And we are, we are, we are you know, engaging in the, in, the, you know, in the, you know, lower services within this world, dealing with the, you know, lower practical things of this plane. And we are holding that upon our head. We are in a lower position. So we always try to keep that consciousness. And this morning we were hearing these beautiful prayers of Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. It's such a beautiful reminder for us. You know, this is Krishna. This is real Krishna consciousness. If you want to know what Krishna consciousness is, it's this. You know, this feeling, this 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 you know real feeling of of humility before you know the greatness of the Lord of the Vaishnavas. <laughs> To feel this natural humility that comes from the from the heart, you know. to feel this necessity to take shelter, you know, I'm nowhere and I'm nothing and I'm nobody. Please, you know, take me into your care. This is the real this is the real substance of Krishna consciousness. And if we can have that type of mood, then we will attract grace in a very powerful way, as Shula Sridhar has expressed. We will. We will draw grace. According to the degree that we have that type of mood in our heart, we will draw corresponding grace. It is, it, will, it is like something irresistible for the Lord, for the higher devotees. When they see that, that type of mood, you know, they, are, they are drawn there. They must come there to, to reciprocate with such a mood of humility and surrender. So this is our... Humility is our wealth. It is our, it is our greatest wealth. And real humility, natural humility. It is not a show, not a posing, but you know, the real feeling of the heart. And we're often reading from Prabhupada Jivanamrita in our classes. It's very important for us to read that book because you know, so many wonderful expressions of humility. We don't have that real feeling, but hearing their feeling gives us some inspiration to try to cultivate that. And, and just by hearing it, something can touch our heart, can enter our heart. It's very inspiring. Okay, well, we can stop there maybe. Anyone want to add anything? Your agenda here? I want to know if this is some misconception I have, or if it's common, if there's some, I don't know, if there's some, something our teachers have said, but is it true that the soul, because we're coming in the line of Mahaprabhu and, you know, through Nityananda's grace, and that's kind of where our where we get any of this mercy anyways. <laughs> so yeah. is is that kind of the first uh, like meeting of the Lord that we'll actually have? And what I mean is that eventually w will we get the opportunity to like take birth in a in a, in a, a universe or Brahmanda, where Mahaprabhu's uh, present there, mm. and that you know we will 
get a chance to serve him or we will get to see him and and in that way you know our soul becomes you can say activated mm. you know, and with this with this is that kind of uh, you can say is that is that our because he's our worshipable deity and especially mm. in the in this Kali Yuga although he's not uh, like his pastimes have kind of come and gone in some way but they're still here because we're worshiping him as in his deity form mm -hmm. so you know maybe I've heard this wrong but I, I feel like someone I've heard that you that eventually we'll have to go to Mahaprabhu's you know to like meet him personally or see him personally to gain entrance any further you know um, like you know oh, awaken in the spiritual world that you know what I mean like because mm -hmm. we're we're giving that hope to people that you know they don't have to live forever in this material world you know mm -hmm. where relationships are like you know constantly interrupted by you know all of these you know all this you know this wheel you know this like Scar of birth and rebirth and all these things. So. Mm. Um, I mean, I think it, it is something individual for every soul. Mm -hmm. Every soul is a unique case. Um, I mean, we've definitely heard Shila Shudamar speak about, uh, you know, this, these different stages of perfection, sarup siddhi, vastu siddhi, you know, sarup siddhi, when they attain perfection within themselves, and then vastu siddhi, they will be, you know, adjusted within a particular environment, you know, of Krishna Leela, and that first, they will, as you said, you know, within one of, uh, you know, you know, Krishna's Leela taking place within a Brahmanda, they will first uh, be situated there and then they will become they will attain further perfection there and then finally they will become fit to join the eternal pastimes. We've heard that description. No doubt it must be true with Gora Leela also mm -hmm. you know? but e every soul is different and every soul has a different inclination you know? We've heard Srila Gurudev and Srila Sridhamarsh mention that some souls have more inclination to Gora Leela, some souls have more inclination to Krishna Leela. Mm -hmm. You know, we've heard like Srila, when, uh, when uh, Divya Shari Didi, when she first met with Srila Sridhamarsh, she asked her, are you more attracted to Krishna Leela or Gora Leela? Also, mm -hmm. also Srila Chargamar, she said when he... But Gurudev asked him that question once. Are you more attracted to Gora Leela or Krishna Leela? Yeah. So every soul is an is an in, is an an individual, you know. And through worshiping within this plane, you know, if a soul has more inclination to Krishna Leela, it may be that through worshiping Mahaprabhu in this plane, then in that way they may get entrance to to Krishna Leela. Mm -hmm. And we've heard Gurudev mentioned different things, you know, about, like he mentioned about Rishabdev. Oh, yeah, so we hear they mention some souls more inclination to Gora Leela, some souls more inclination to Krishna Leela. Some have equal disposition. This is mentioned in Brahma Samhita. Some have equal dis disposition to both, and they attain a place in both. And Srila Gurudev, he actually said that about Rishabdev Prabhu when he left. You heard that, right? I know. He said that about Rishabdev, who he's, he went to Gora Krishna Leela. That, you know, he had went to a place in, in both. And I, I think he meant he immediately went there. Not that he went through some, some you, know, you know, this like interim period within the Vermanda, but, you know, from what Gurudev said. He also said about Sadanti Marsh, he got everything in one lifetime, you know. And there was another devotee, I think he was from Hawaii. He came to Navadweep and he was there, I think, for some months. Divya Shakti Didi was there, she can tell you more details. 
and and he was there for some time doing very you know faithful sincere service and and actually Madhu Sudamar he he told us that when he ended up leaving his body in Abadip he became very <coughs> sick and 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 the devotees they wanted to make some shadha ceremony for him and Gurudev said he came here you know and with full faith and he sincerely rendered such good service for this period of time what does he need a shadha ceremony for he doesn't need anything you know and but but uh, somebody asked Gurudev after he left you know where did maybe Divya Shakti herself asked him where did he go and Gurudev said first he will go to the heavenly planets to complete, to fulfill some material desires that he still had. And from there he will go up. That was what he said. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, all I can, essentially what I can say in response to your question is, every soul is individual and I think anything's possible. You know, according to their inclination, their dedication and the grace of Guru, you know. There are many, many possibilities. There's not one particular root, you know, that's carved in, in stone. That's such an interesting question, too. But I mean, just knowing that Gurudev and Guru Maharaj asked that. Like, yes, they, they would ask that. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> <laughs> I know for myself. How would you answer that question? <laughs> I know for myself, like I, I didn't know anything about Mahaprabhu when I first met the devotees because <coughs> it was here in Iskand and they just didn't really talk about Mahaprabhu that much. You were in Iskan for a while first. I, I just yeah, I was just frequenting mm. the temple in my hometown. Mm. You know, and that's the first mm. devotees and the first time mm. I ever heard about Krishna consciousness ever. Mm. So. I didn't. I saw a picture of Mahaprabhu, and I th always would think that like that's a very interesting picture mm. because it was his form that he showed Roman and Roy. Mm. And like, I think it's three armed or six armed. So he had like. You mean to Sarvabhoma but to Charya. Ah, Sarvabhoma but to Charya. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, six armed form. And, uh, yeah, just seeing that picture was... But, you know, Nitai Goronga was on the altar there. But mm. I just never, I never understood kind of who that really was mm. until I met the Bodhis of Sri Chaitanya Saraswati Maharaj. Mm. Okay. Mm. And we hear Srila Sridharmarsh in his last days, he was faced with this dilemma. Think, should I think about Mahaprabhu or Krishna, but for him it, it was it was it was obvious Mahaprabhu. <laughs> He's so given to Mahaprabhu. <laughs> we we better. It's getting late. We better okay. better stop. Yeah. Jai Shila Gurudev Ki Jai. Will you sing for me? Sure. <clears throat> visitors on our Insta on my Instagram. <laughs> Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Abeta Gadadhar Shri Matabhi Nora Matabhita. Shri Abeta Gadadhar
Jai Sapari Karashishi Gu Goranga Gandhava Govinda Sunaju Ki Jai Jai Sapari Karashi Gorachandra Guru Goranga Radha Giri Dhari Guru Goranga Radha Giri Dhari Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pachu Bhakti Sara Govinda Deva Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pachu Bhakti Rakakshira Deva Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pai Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Sai Swati Thakur Ki Jai Jai Shri Rupa Nuguru Vaga Ki Jai Jai All Assembled Devotees Ki Jai 
Jai Ko Ko Kartal Ki Jai Jai Shri Upadesham Rita Ki Jai Jai Rupa Goswami Ki Jai Jai all the all the Goswamis Ki Jai Shad Goswami yeah Jai Jai Shri Bhakti Nirmal Charja Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Bhakti Yoga Institute Ki Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai Jai Vishaka Devi Das Ki Jai And Harinam Sekitan Ki Jai Jai Gaur Pramanande Haribo Charam Ki Jai I miss Madhusudan Maharaj's 